What's up earlier? Just gonna have everybody, those of you who've been here. Frank Beal, instructor uh, here. And I'm teaching uh, quote unquote super kicks today. I'm actually going to guarantee that we cover the Superman kick in class. There was Superman punch, rather, I should say, to kind of include it as kind of part of the kick but, uh, class. Uh, I just wanted to kind of go through some of the ways that I do different kicks, and I am happy to, I kind of wanted today to be a, a little uh, a little fluid, so I'll have the stuff that I want to do, but if y'all have something you want to do, y'all are welcome to interject. Like, how can you, you know, what about this one, the particular one? Um, we're going to start off with side kicks. That is my, my major kick. Uh, I do side kicks a couple of different ways. And uh, the one we're going to do today is what I class as a snapping side kick. Um, I have seen kicks on multiple amounts of ways when it comes to side kicks. One you see a lot is uh, the leg coming up, almost the uh, foot against the knee, and fanning out and throwing that kick. Just, and that's a good kick. You see a lot of the Japanese um, martial arts. In fact, there's a couple of books I've got which are really cool because they, they take it and they do like a freeze frame. So you see the leg here and then here, 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 here. Um, I'm not a huge fan of leading with the knee, though, from the way I kick. Uh, Hector, if you don't mind, sir. Because what I find is that if Hector's here and I fan my side kick, he he hip bumps me basically. He will stop me from being able to get my kick. And that's, that's one to me, that's one of the drawbacks of kicking that way. So the way I like to kick is I always leave the, the, the foot first. So even if Hector gets in, gets in, gets in, I can still give him a little bump there. In fact, Robbie Sykes was uh, one of the main people who pushed me with this. That's why he kicked. He liked to, he would show us, he's like, I don't know why y'all, you don't have to be really close versus to be really far away to kick, he would actually sit right here, shoulder to shoulder, talking to us, and pick his foot up for you, and hit and kick you. And you feel it, a nice and heel right in your ribs. And so I've kind of taken that, and I, I kind of work it, and um, I can honestly say I've accidentally broken a couple people's ribs with these, um, because I like to kick hard when we're doing them. That's why we're using the thick shields today. Um, but I think anybody can. This is the lead leg kick we're going to start off with. It's traditionally not very strong. Kind of a, you know, it's like your jab. Jab is not meant to be strong. It's meant to kind of feel the person out, keep them at bay, set them up for stronger, um, stronger kicks or stronger hits. Today, what we're going to start off with is one that I, I perceive, search for point fighting. It's, it's my go to move. Um, who, who, point fighting? Point fighting. Am I? So, perfect example what I do here. Uh, What's your main? If we're here, what do you? What's your go-to here for fighting? Uh, it depends. All right, hand wise. Hand wise. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I try to fall. Yep. Kicks and try to get distracted. Yep. And go back. Exactly. So what we usually look for is as that back fist goes for my head. I would. I'm a very uh, defensive fighter. I would just wait as it does. I lean back so she's having aim, and I put my foot right into the ribs. So we would literally sit here. So she goes. Boom. Now I'm away, I kind of lean back out of the way there as it comes and throw that side kick in. And we do it for a point fight. Point fight is a tag. It's a game of time and speed, no power, really. If you do your not point fight, you're doing like full contact. Um, but we're going to take the same kick. Thing. Take the same kick, and we're going to go for speed a little bit and timing, but also power. So what I'm shooting for, same kick. Same type of thing. My body's not going to, it's mainly my leg here. And that's kind of what we're shooting for. So today, when you're doing that, I want you pushing your part. I really want you to compress this shield to the point that hopefully you're breaking somebody's ribs. Not today, but some other time where you're at some other facility other than mine. So everybody grab your part. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come on, one of y'all sitting down, come on in here. Come on. All right. Hey, we got enough for everybody. Grab. Grab a bag, grab a ring. Hector, I don't know, I think, I think Steve's coming. Steve's coming, Steve's coming. Y'all want to work together? Come on, you're here, you might as well. Come on in, come on. Right center stage for me, come on. And we won't just be doing side kicks, we'll work some different ones, but to start off with, that's kind of what I want to do. So, let's see if we got another big bag. 
knew we had more. All right. Here you go. Y'all might have swapped them. All right. And one thing I will tell you, I have found when you're holding these bags, there's tons of ways to hold them. I like to grab the top and bottom opposing corners and put it against my body. I don't want it to be a projectile. I want to hold it tight. The reason I don't like the side handles, we do round picks a lot of times in here, and somebody's overzealous, they come right around the corner of the bag and bust you in the knuckles, or they bust their foot on your knuckle. This one's good too, but I find that you've got a hard kicker, you start actually ramming your own arm into your ribs, that starts to hurt too. So this way, have the least amount of physical contact in the area you're likely to kick. Now, if you're round kicking, I wouldn't hold it this way. I would, I would go that way. So you're kicking on the side with my hand's barely there. But either one right there. See if that works for y'all. Let's go ahead and just try about 10 kicks each. Oh, um, so I'm here. A part, I want you to turn your knee towards me, though. Because if you got a, a person who's got a really poor aim and they go low and miss the shield, they're going to hit your knee. They hit it here, it hurts. They hit it here, it breaks. So that's kind of what we're looking at. I'm going to get here. I'm, right now, we're not moving at all. I'm going to look at my space, get it where I feel comfortable. I'm going to hit and still have a little bit of a push, of about six inches. So I'm here. That's all I'm shooting for. Right here. That noise is the air being pushed out of that bag. That's why I want to. If y'all get a shot in the face from the bag, that's all I do. Is try that. Very little chamber. The snapping kicks go from A to B. Just here. That's what I'm shooting for. Come on, give it a shot. Give it a shot. Y'all want to slide this way? About 10 kicks and trade. Good. Start walking for you, not fast, just coming up. As they start coming at you, 
it's just like a steady, just like you're coming at me. So you're coming at me right through here, in case I feel it. Boom, I hit. And what I want you to realize is that keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Too slow, too close. No way I should have done that one. Keep coming. Too far away, you know? And it's a sweet spot. And the reason I want you to get that is that sweet spot's the difference between you hitting them and you hitting them. And that's what it is. I want, when I hit the bag, I like to be about like this. Okay? My leg's about that much bit so that I can rest the way out. Yeah. This is not a dry, you know, if I was going to smash into this bag, we've got cricket just hanging out on my wall there. If I was going to smash this bag, I would step in. Alright? I'm not doing that. I'm doing the least amount of movement possible. The least amount of movement possible so that I don't get anything away. I'm not telegraphing anything. And I'm hoping that you think I'm not moving. And you go to that hand strike. And you open up and move something. And I catch in the ribs. So this one here, you're coming at the person. As you feel comfortable, pick your foot up. Boom. Stick it on out. All right? It's a timing and a range thing right now. Give it a shot. Come on. Again. Let's go five and five this time. Yeah, yeah. Coming in. Oh, uh, you got me. Good. Hope you're all right. You want me to help you? Let me help you. Try to do it with half a step to the side. Yeah, I got a slap. Now, 
Um, you have influences from Muay Thai and American kickboxing, and all those kind of have their own little, little way of doing things. Um, I thought we would also look at uh, a switch kick today, which is a, um, it's a prominent one in the, in the Muay Thai. And all the switch kick is, it's a way to chamber your lead round kick to get some more power. Um, I, 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 a lead round kick only has so much power. Come on, Will. You don't mind? But again, since I'm doing the round kick, I'm very cautious. I don't like, I like to hold the hand. Will wants to hold. This one, he can probably get away with that arm behind if he wants to. But actually, I don't like to hold the hand because I, I, I get busted in the hand all the time. So my lead leg here, just here, it's just a, a snap and round. It's got some power, it's a little pop, but it doesn't have really as much power as it could if I threw it off the rear leg. Yes, what can y'all you want to group the rear right hand? Alright, so y'all can y'all can just group up do it. You, you can do a group of You can do a group of three if you want to. So what I'm gonna do with this is just like you would Sometimes, and I don't say improperly, but sometimes you'll work and do a strike so this hand can come back to your face so you can strike with it. This switch allows me to do the same thing to pull my leg back a little bit and get a little power. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a, a swap of my legs quickly so it puts this one back. Not as far as if it was a full-on rear leg kick. But right through here, and I kick in. You see my wolf reaction, there's a little more power to it. So you're here, and you kick. It's just a little, step, and almost like you're kind of pulling back. The difference is <clears throat> you do that with your hands a lot of times. You can see it coming. With this, it's in here. You swap a little bit, and while he's looking at all this going on, I kick. All right. And so that's <clears throat> sorry. Yes. That's what we're looking for. So again, we're here. Pop and kick. No different than any other round kick you throw, just the setup's a little different. It is not full on change the side of your body. Alright? And it's not pop up and switch either. It's just boom, here. Pop and go. And you want to spring almost like you step back onto something like a nail. Like, oh, up! You pick your foot up. But when you pick your foot up, you kick. Alright? Oh, uh, I think that's it. Oh, yeah, boom! Yeah, that's it. And, and if you look, it ties in with a lot of the other kicks. It's nice if we'll if you'll stand right here for me, buddy. And they tie this lead leg kick into two others. I'll show you those real quick. We won't work on today. Happy to discuss them with you later on today or at lunch. But if you see lead leg, boom. I can touch the center of the bag right now. Will scoots back about six inches. <laughs> Cannot touch the bag. I switch. I can touch the center of the bag. So I gained about six inches. Will goes back about a foot and a half. Ruin six inches, like 18 inches you got. I, I can't hit it here. If I swap, I can't hit it. But I step and I hit it. And they use those three together. You know, you, you go to kick the guy, slam, slam, he moves back, a little bit. ah, he moves back. Follow the person down. So those three go together as much as they can. So right now, what we're shooting for just that switch. I don't care which leg you use. Pop, boom. And since it's a Muay Thai kick, shin bone. And you know, I have a tendency to hit my foot two meters of karate. To be honest with you, I don't know. I'm, I'm comfortable kicking people with my foot. But Muay Thai, they, they look at the danger of kicking somebody who's blocked and really solid versus somebody getting kicked in the head. And they don't want that elbow to meet that foot. But you break your foot, no from experience, you don't want to kick much more like that. It actually kind of hurts. And then so you're like, I don't want to kick with this foot. I'll kick with the other foot. <sighs> no, I won't. So you're just kind of here. And so, yeah, I know from experience, you're done kicking for the day once you uh, break your foot on somebody's elbow when you shouldn't have done the kick to do it. Give it a shot. So the switch kick. Do about five train, five train. Just keep going. It, it, it messes with me. Yeah, just need to get more speed by reducing the switch. So that you literally have to keep more sun to the So here, ah! 
but the engine is more power. So it's kind of like, what do you want? You need more speed, you need more power, and you just play with it. So you just break it. Ooh, too close. Ooh, too close. Basically, it means go kick something easily, 
You're going to crack your bones on a microscopic level. They will reheal a little stronger. Uh, in the old days, you were just told to punch stuff. You got calluses or kicks. I actually have a friend. He has one long knuckle across these three. But one thing we point out, he has one long knuckle across his first two toes. Where just for his style, his style boom, he did it for years. And I'm like, dude, that's not only that weird, that's disgusting. You know? <laughs> but, but he did giant, it's, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I've broken a little bit here on the hand, and I use this one on the other. So people will sometimes point out that this knuckle here is a lot larger than every other knuckle on my hand. So I'm hoping that I won't get like one finger as I get older, having arthritis or something. But, but yeah, if you're going to be kicking anything, I don't, or punching anything, I don't care if it's hands, feet, whatever, elbows, you know, you've got some very strong parts of your body. But no matter what it is, it can get broken. Slowly build up. You know, I, I love it when people come in, like, oh, can I break that board? And like, oh, you need to be careful. I got it. Ah, you know, even they broke the, they broke the board. They did it properly, but their hand's just not used to it, and they get hurt. And you think, like, well, that's because they're new. I've done it. I was showing a guy one time. He's had you just this easy watch. Hold the board. Bam, I broke it. Fine. I, I did it every other time. Countless times. Walk away like that. Why did that feel? Look, and the entire back of my hand was like that big. I clipped something somewhere in here that I guess pumped something into my body or through my body. It wasn't blood, so it must have been a fluid of some type. I don't know what it was, but I mean the whole thing just swole up quickly, like within you know a minute. And I, the whole back of my hand was squishy. It was gross. It went away in a couple of days, but I, you know, so you can injure yourself. Um, so we have kicks. Um, anybody? And, and we've covered a version of the sidekick, a version of a round kick. We did a lot of foot kicks in the last class. Uh, anybody got anything in particular that they're just dying to look at or maybe uh, talk about today, kick wise? Anything? Nothing? Good. All right. We're going to uh, spinning sidekicks. Now, I like spinning sidekicks and I like to teach them, and I found there's two ways to teach them, and both of them have a practical application. Uh, I like spinning sidekicks because they're powerful and it catches people off guard. You catch them on the opposite side than they're expecting. Um, so if I have a spinning sidekick, I have two of them. I have what I call 180 degree and 90 degree. Okay. My 180 is a standard one. I'm here with the person and I turn and I kick. You hear? You kick. And that's great. But when somebody's learning to do it, one of the first things they do is here and they miss the back. Because that turning is difficult for some people starting off. So what I teach <coughs> as well, step and then turn. And that literally cuts the turn in half, hence the name 90 degree spinning side. But I found there was some practical application for both. Well, since you're sitting right there online, step me up. Right. So, if Will and I are fighting, let's go back just a little bit. And I'm ready to throw, maybe he throws like it. If you do his cross at me with his rear hand, boom, you know, and I can do one egg. I can catch him here. But what I'm looking at there is I don't have a fear of getting run over by him. I don't have a fear of him overpowering. So I'll stay toe to toe. He comes at me, boom, I'll throw my kick. Alright, I'm not worried about it. However, add about a foot to Will and how much you weigh right now? Make some 100 pounds, good. And about 150 pounds, then when I go to kick him, if he charges me, boom, he might knock me down. And then standard rule of thumb is most people, especially for some reason taller, bigger people, come straight. So what I found is I can step off the line of attack. So we'll just use this line here as a line of attack. I step off, and as he's charging at me, I kick. And if he drives me away, he drives me away at an angle. He drives me away away from the line of attack, away from him. So not only is it an easier kick to learn, but you could have a reason for it. And you know, we work on that here. Boom! I hit him. It pushes me over here. It doesn't push me right in line with where he's going to be going after he takes that hit. Because if he blocks it, he's still going to be coming right back at you. So I want you to try both. I want you to remind me to get your head around. If you can't see what you're kicking, you're not really going to kick. You're just getting lucky. All right? Get your head around. Try both. Come on, if you don't mind. So we're going to stand, face our partner. I'm going to turn all the way around my head, 
can't see my feet haven't moved yet. I see it. And this is kind of where the kick's going to go from. And you can do a little more than this, but this is the base. Right here. Boom. I kick in. Or I do this one here. Step, turn. Now I kick in. Both of them work. Both of them are very effective. Both of them will turn somebody in half uh, when you get them, you know, bend them right over. They might throw up on you. And there you hit them. Never happened actually, but I'm waiting for that one day when it's done. But, but it is that idea that when you're kicking here, try both, especially if you're struggling. And I will tell you, when I'm throwing like a, a 90 degree, I really like to not step, because she sees it, she goes through. I really like to step. Throw something up here so she's looking at this tiny guard and what have you. Boom! And then I'll lay in with my side. So let's try both of those. Uh, you can do one or both. Again, let's try five times trade, five times trade, and keep going back and forth. Come on, give it a shot. We will finish up with Superman kicks and the Alan Belcher kick, or Superman punch. I keep saying kicks for some reason. The Alan Belcher punch. Floating down here on the sides, protecting the kidneys. 
the faults come together and they connect into one of the last true ribs. So these here are easier to break than up here. So something to think about. We got a whopping 15 minutes left. I'm gonna review the kicks we did real quick, and then I'm gonna get y'all do. We're gonna need the walls. So let's kind of take turns. Because we're gonna do the uh, Superman punch, which is set up with the kick, and we'll do the Alex. I call it. It's you know a wall wall punch, or actually I call it Alan Belcher because he actually did it at UFC, not the guy. Out. And so I know it's supposed to be kicks, but you, you'll set these up. Um, so let's take a look real quick. Quick review. And I'm just trying to keep up with time. I don't want to run over, especially because lunch starts in 15 minutes. So we got subs. The first thing we did here, all I did is take my foot up here and I put it right. And, and don't push the person. That doesn't bother a person. It moves them. They feel it right here on the top of their stomach. You know? Ow. You know? What I want to do, I'm you what I want to do. I want my foot to compress the rib, ah, and they move back because the rest of their body can't take that. And you act like you're piercing somebody. So it's kind of like if you had a knife, you don't stab somebody. You know, it's called ow, ow. You, you're like, you know, and you stab in. It's the same type of thing here. Stab with these kids if you want to do damage. Now, if you just want to move somebody away, just slow it down a little bit, push. And see, nowhere near as much power, but you went back like a whole lot further. And so a lot of times we get mistaken and we think, well, if I knock the person back six feet, ten feet, that's a powerful kick. Mm -hmm. Maybe. It may be an amazingly powerful kick, or you may just push them. And you feel like, ah, I don't really know what you're talking about. Come in here and watch any of my children's classes. Because I ask them to back this and knock the bag over, and they just do this to the bag. Did it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess you guess kind of thing. Really want that, you know. So look at that. Sometimes I don't want you to move far away. And it's very important too, if you're fighting, you want to hit them again. You know, catch one more time. You're right here. Oh, and you're right in the middle. So yeah, you take that shot in the body. And that will break ribs sometimes. Pushing people, shoving people, they'll go back, but their body takes that one. So that's what I call these snapping. All my snapping techniques. Go from core to the body, it's back, it's all about speed. Then we work on the uh, switch kick. We'll turn this down a little bit. So, switch kick, all I'm looking now is that it comes, I was taught from Muay Thai and kickboxing. I swap my feet right here. Again, it's not as far back that I have to change the side of my body. I just here, so I keep my body from the same. And I kick in. And again, I can do that. I can push like that. Now, Push the person, or I get that pop. You know it's good if your partner tells you they can feel it through the back. Because it went, the force went through the back. You feel it. Um, and then you get hit sometimes, it's like, hmm. Oh. Yeah, I felt that one. These are like nine inches thick. So if you feel it, your partner's kicking pretty solid. Not hard, but it's, it's getting to you. Um, and of course, we just do the spinning kick. So again, I'm not going to kick real hard on these. All you know, we have the 180. Turn, drive into the bag again. How are you accelerating? Are you slowly speeding up? And then it's a pushing kick. You're going to shove them away. Or you go from like 0 to 60 in 1.2 seconds. You know? If you're going super fast and you're accelerating really fast and you just hit them, they're going to get that piercing effect. The other one is the, what I call the 90 degree, and I do that again. I like to distract, but I step over to cut my turn in half. And I drive it. We do a lot of side kicks today. I recommend that you kick with the heel or the edge of the foot, knife edge. Uh, some people can't handle that, especially if you're old like me. You know? So you got, yeah, y'all give me books, yeah. I am one. I think I'm one of the old, like top three. In the top three. Two. Top three. In the top. <laughs> um, your, your ankle sometimes that bothers you, that's the edge of the foot. So it's hard to roll over. Um, you can kick with the ball of the foot, but I find people do that and start round kicking. Side. So when having somebody who has difficulty, they start they start round kicking the bag, I tell them hit their heel. If people consult with their heel, and that's all your side kick is, everybody. A side kick is this. If you're having trouble, you need some extra practice time, just give me some. That's all it is. That's your side kick. The round kick that we did, you can kick the ball of foot, 
pot the foot, the instep, the shin. But for Muay Thai, they like the shin. It's a lot harder to break. Not impossible. Now, especially if you get hit on the side, you can block them wrong. That's something to look at. Alright, here's the fun one. And I already know some of y'all will be like, I, I, can't, I can't do this. That's okay. We don't pass it. We don't really need the bag for this one, but we're going to use it. I want you to use the top handles. I like these bags. And put it right here. You know, just use like a suitcase. Just hold it up right here next to you. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to do leg kicks, primarily straw for So I'm going to turn it so all I can see is the handle. I'm going to use my rear leg and I'm like, bam, and I hit. Bam, and I hit. Bam. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this leg going, and I'm going to pull the leg back real quick and throw the same side of the bike. So I'm like, one, Three. That's why we save a little time on this one. One, I'll try to do as slow as I can. It's very fast. One. Two, all right. I get it here, and then I hop and kick back. And as I kick back, punch. That's what they call it, Superman. <laughs> I will tell you, the punch is really not that strong. It's just a, it's like a jab, a little more oomph, in my opinion. Uh, but it is very demoralizing when you're sparring somebody and they, they get faked out. And I had some guys who used to work out and they hated it because they didn't do this particular strike, this particular kick setup, and they would always get hit with it. So you're here with them. Boom. Boom. Bam. You hit in the face and you get a little running motion afterwards and it really, everybody hates it. Um, so I want you to try it. It's going to be a little different. If you are struggling with it, I'm going to tell you now. Foot up here on the bag, pull your hand back, swap. Put your foot up on the bag, hand back, swap. And that is an easy way to start. Try. Come on. Everybody give it a try. Come on. Come on, Will. Hop on out there, buddy. There you go. Yep. That's all you use. Start doing it. Bam! You came back. You just push off. And, you know, and bring it down like it's uh, like a snake to your leg, like you're kicking the thigh. And just to really mess 
you know, keep in mind there's also a Superman jab, which I don't like and can't do very well. But uh, George St. Pierre did it in a fight with uh, crap. <laughs> Josh Koscheck and did it like a billion times on regular jab. And just, I mean, he walked out there all full up, and, but it, you can do it too. So it's just like, bam, you hit him with the jab. I can't do it. It doesn't feel strong, it doesn't feel good. But Mr. St. Pierre just knocked it out of the park over and over. We got out five minutes. And I know we're going to have a little limited space in the wall here. I didn't tear the other wall off. I'll go. So why don't a couple of y'all you can hang here on the floor and then start migrating here? Let's work that last one. You mind? The last one is a punch. You don't really need to shield for anything except a punch if you want. And here's how it works. I've got this here, and I can hit. Okay? You don't have to hit hard. Just get the feeling for the hit. With the MMA, of course, they had a cage, which is like a wall. And Alan Belcher worked off where one where he was, you're good, you're good. Yeah, so you're going to be away from the person a little bit. He was up against the wall and he came up, foot on the wall, not, not to stomp, I did that for fair, and push. So the person's like maybe even, even here, that's six feet away. And you're just like, boom, and you hit. That's all it was. You're here, you hear the person, boom, and he gives you a little bump and as you do it. Uh, come a little closer, you want right there. Boom. And that's all. You can throw this in your face, but you have to kind of have the wall. That's why I say this one for life. You can come up like you're going to kick, and then kick back. Uh, and our other group has a similar thing. You can go here. Um, but yeah, it's just like here, boom, come in. I like to get the person, for me personally, about here, come up, and push off right here. Push away. Five I'm sorry, yeah. But, so, and you don't have to get a lot of height as much as just. Yeah. And if you're having trouble, that's what I want you to do. Skip the punch. Plunge yourself forward, and that's all you're looking at. It throws your body forward as you do. Alan Bell should take care of everybody. Come on, give it a shot. And we will call it a class and go grab some grub. Huh? Yeah, but they're real funny on certain things, so I have to see. Let me get y'all. Since I did not take that at all, let's roll this around so y'all can. There you go. Foot up on the wall and push. Boom. Be careful. Don't hit hard. You'll roll your wrist. Yeah, you want to use that smart, that smart. Yeah. The whole Here, man. Here, You just hold your arm. You're welcome. Five times straight. This also is a rear punch. Now, you can jam with it. The kicking mechanism works just like a Superman punch. It's about to kind of knock it together. It gives you a little bit of a boom. There you go. Good. Watch. Don't hit too, too hard. Makes it, it makes it where you have to punch right away. Yeah. 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 Y
traditionally kickboxing. You see somebody here, okay? He's got a lot of Muay Thai experience. But you had these guys in here, you're going like, oh, that, that's a point, you know, that's one of those guys that does the, you know, the, the more modern point, you know, sparring. And those guys are doing really well. And um, that's about the same time that I remember seeing it. I remember seeing it actually on that show. Um, and so, it, you know, it's something to look at there. Um, anybody have any, any questions at all? Kicks? Nothing? See, I told you, you had to, I never get questions. I appreciate your questions. Oh, um, if you do, please let me know. We're going uh, to go ahead and break for lunch, and I'm going to set some tables up and bring out. It is make your own subs. we got white and wheat bread and a variety of, of stuff you all put on there, and uh, some drinks and all. Did you get the ice? Okay. <laughs> So that, that sarcasm tells me she did get the ice, so we got all that. Um, and we'll go through and get everybody going. Um, yeah, but if you don't have any questions, guys, thank y'all very much, all right? Y'all have a good one. Let's take the shields and dump them right there.